Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Buck Shock, where we'll help you become a better and more successful deer hunter. Today, in today's episode, we're going to show you the different ways to make a European mount. If you don't want to do a full-on taxidermy job or you can't afford it, whatever. Um, joined today by my one of my best friends, Will, hey guys. aka Jimmy. If you ever hear Jimmy, that's Will. It's uh, we're nicknamers. So, uh, but anyway, today we're going to show you from the most basic process on how to make a European mount all the way up to the, the most advanced uh, process to get the, the result you're looking for. So, you shoot a deer, uh, the first thing you're gonna wanna do uh, if you're doing a European mount is cut the head off. Um, you're kinda more, probably, I, I usually just cut the head off right, you know, right at the back of the head, um, cause you're gonna cut most of that stuff off anyway, but do you have any advice on doing that or is it just pretty so straightforward? The easiest way I can explain it is without damaging the skull, you want to get as close to the skull as you can. Most taxidermists will charge you extra if you leave two or three pieces of vertebrae with the neck meat on it attached to the skull. So you want to take the neck vertebrae off as close to the skull as possible. That's good advice. I didn't even know that, so um, I'll have to remember that myself. But So once you do that, you're going to... You're gonna take the head and completely skin skin all the hair, all the all the uh, skin off of it, and dig out as much flesh and, and eyeballs and all that stuff as you can before you um, do whatever process you're gonna be doing. Um, and that really, you're not trying to save any of it. So I mean, it, it doesn't have to be pretty. But I mean, do you have any anything on the, an easy way to skin a head? I pretty much just start hacking away. <laughs> I usually cut down the bottom of the jaw here and then just kind of start maybe cut up here on the top of the head and just start working my way around the antlers and down to the nose. Um, is that how you do it? or? So I have a taxidermy business. I do European mounts. The way I start it, I'll hold the top lip up. I'll start inside the gum line and I'll slowly work it back along the nose, around the eyes, bring it up to the antler. I'll make a slip from the back of the eye socket to the base of the antler and I will peel it around the antler, down the back, and that will completely dehide the head. And the biggest thing, you wanna be careful with your knife. If you're using a heavy blade knife and you hit the bone, because the bone's wet, it's soft, and you'll actually leave gouges in it from the knife. Advice there. Um, so he does it pretty much the exact opposite of me, the non-professional, <laughs> the, the one that doesn't do taxidermy work. So um, either way will work, but his way probably is better since he's you know very proficient in doing it that way. Uh, so once you get the skin off and you get most of the meat off of it that you can uh, with your knife, as he said, be careful with it. You know, don't gouge it up. Uh, once you get that all off of there, get the, get the eyeballs and all that meat and stuff off the best you can time to decide which way you want to go about uh, finishing it so there's pro there's I think we have five different ways here that we're gonna talk about um, and we're gonna start from the most basic easiest thing to do all the way up to the most advanced um, to where you're paying for it to have it done um, so this head here this head actually this head we don't even have a head that's just been hung out so the, the first thing the easiest way would be to just skin it out and hang it up in a tree. Um, you know, tie it with a rope or something up so that critters don't try to haul, haul it away on you. But the easiest thing would be to hang it up somewhere, um, maybe on a fence post or whatever. Um, any other ideas on that? Just outside in general? Yeah, a lot of people, they'll find an apple tree, something with branches lower down that you can reach, and they'll just hang it in a tree. But like Big Buck Shuck said, the biggest disadvantage of that is you have to worry about animals taking it down, chewing on it, damaging the bone, damaging the horns. So it's a very inexpensive way, but you're kind of playing Russian you that. Right. So yeah, you're battling with the critters on that. Um, just try to do your best, get it high, I would say. I mean, yeah. get it up in the air. That'd be the, you want the birds to be able to get at it, to pick at it and stuff. And obviously bugs are going to get to no matter what, but keeping it away from the other critters if you're just hanging it out that's that's the best way to do that so after that if you uh, the next th different way would be to like this one here I, I buried it um, I dug a hole 
I just dug a hole and buried it right up to the base of the antlers here like that. So all that was sticking out was the antlers. Um, and I just left this head in the ground for, I don't even remember, eight, I think it was summer when I pulled it out. All winter and, and spring it was in there. And then I think early summer I pulled it out. And you can see it's pretty, it's pretty dark and stained. I mean, it's not the prettiest, but if you like that, you know, natural, um, I don't know, earth tone look, I guess, you know, that's, that's one way to do it. And it's all you need to do it that way is a shovel. <laughs> so, and, and I didn't wrap it with a bag or anything. I didn't do any fancy nothing. I just buried it in, in the dirt. So that turned out okay. But you can see that, you know, the, the no, part of the nose broke off. Um, the bottom jaw broke off. And most of these, I don't know, do you ever, do you ever keep the bottom jaw on or do you, does it always it's, come off? It's customer's discretion. I've had customers in the past that want the bottom jaw left on. Once the head has been defleshed, there's only two small bones that are only connected by muscle. The lower jaw is not connected by bone to the top of the skull. The only way to keep the bottom jaw attached once it's been defleshed is super gluing the teeth together. So that sounds like a pain in the butt. <laughs> kind of. It's hu it's a huge pain in the neck, and yeah. I actually charge extra for people who want the bottom jaw to stay attached. Okay. So more than likely, um, as you can see with these four, your bottom jaw is probably going to come off. It's the easiest way, you know. Um, you're still going to get a quality mount, the bottom jaw, unless you're having it like sit on a table or something. I guess that'd probably be one of the only ways that I would leave it on, um, if it's going to be some sort of display like in your house. But other than that, it's going to be hanging on the wall, flat usually like this unless you get one of them pedestal mounts which you know it's up to you like he said so so after the after burying it um, this head here I, I submerged it in water in a bucket um, I just put it filled a five gallon bucket up with water put a, I don't, a board or I don't remember if I used tie wire or something just to keep the antlers up out of the water um, and I changed the water out every two to three days it's best to do that when it's warm out if you can or keep it in a somewhat warmer environment so the bacteria can grow and, and eat that the, the microscopic um, bugs can decompose the rest of the flesh that's in there uh, I pulled it out every couple days scraped off the, the meat that was ready to come off as best I can hose it out um, power washer works good to get that the rest of the crap off of it and I just kept doing that until it was um, until it was done so and this is kind of the outcome of, of that of the water submersion method it's a little cleaner it's not as stained it's not as dark as the, the buried head and obviously you know like your nose piece is there still it comes out pretty good because nothing's you know it's just in water so it's not really getting messed with um, so that's that one then the next process would be uh, this guy, I boiled it. I didn't use any bleach or any peroxide or anything like that. I just I had a, uh, the best way to do that, this one I actually boiled in the house. Um, and if you value your marriage at all, you probably should do this outside. Uh, so I used a big pot, a cooking pot, like a, like a pasta pot big you know five or six quart whatever whatever it was and same thing just submerged it up to the base of the antlers and I boiled that for a few hours and every every so often half hour 45 minutes I'd pull it out and scrape off the meat and scrape the brains and all that good stuff um, as you can see this has been it's been moved around a lot from from us moving around but it weakens boiling anytime you boil boil it it weakens the bones um, so you got you'll have teeth falling out your, your nose piece here will be probably broken off at some point because it just softens that bone up um, so I did that like I said I kept scraping the meat off I didn't do any bleach in it no additives just straight water and and it came out pretty pretty nice I mean none of these on this side none of these have been brushed with peroxide or whitened in any way so this is what it came out how it came out you can see it's lighter down here 
and a little darker up in this area. I'm not sure if it's just because of the thicker bone or or what that would be from, but. So the biggest thing that people mess up with boiling is they actually boil it. You don't want to actually boil your deer heads. Otherwise you get issues with this, with the nose piece falling off, with the cartilage inside the nose being broken apart. You actually want to flush your skull out and actually bring your water just up to like a high simmer put the head in there uh, i know people that do it they generally use like a cup to a cup and a half of dawn dish soap that will actually help pull some of the grease and fat out of the head that's the entire reason that it's slightly lighter down here than up here the water at the nose was hotter than the water at the top so it pulled a little bit more fat and oils out of the bone but if you have your water set to just a high simmer let it go for 45 minutes to an hour it will loosen up a lot of that meat scrape off as much as you can put it back in and then when you're done set it out in the sun give it a full 24 hours to dry it'll help the bone harden back up and you may not have as many issues with your nose caps and the end of your um, sinus cavity falling off so that's a lot of things that I was doing wrong, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know any any of that at all. I just put it in the pot. I wanted my, my I wanted to boil the head and get a nicer came off. So that's what I did. But yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. Is why it, you know why it would be because all that heat would be at the bottom of the pot where the nose would be. So that makes a lot of sense. Learn something new every day. Cool. Um, so from there, from boiling it, you can. You can add bleach to it. Some guys add bleach. Some guys put peroxide in there. Um, but I don't know. Kind of like like you were saying. I, I don't really think that's probably the best way to do it. Now that you're saying. Now that I know what you just said. And because um, I'd imagine all that bleach and peroxide and crap in there would be lightening up all of this. I mean, I, this right here to me is that's like gold. I love that character. It, it seems like it would take away from that. It know? does. You can actually bleach and peroxide. They don't care what they're whitening. If it's bone, they're gonna whiten it. So whether it's the antlers, the skull, it's gonna turn white. And another thing, you don't really know how the peroxide, how the bleach is gonna react with the heat. So if you get it a little too hot, it might make it more caustic to where it actually dissolves your head. If you don't have the heat high enough, it may not do anything. So unless you really know what you're doing, you're kind of playing with fire when you try and mix chemicals in with your heads. Yeah, that's, that's uh, definitely something to think about. That's stuff that I didn't think about for sure. Um, not that I used it on that one, but yeah. Uh, and you were saying earlier that you've actually seen um, teeth in the bottom of like a bowl or a pot actually dissolve from peroxide? So when I whiten the deer heads that I do with my taxidermy business, I use a high strength peroxide mixed with a small amount of Dawn dish soap, the peroxide is actually so caustic that if a tooth falls out and it goes to the bottom of the pot where the peroxide is maybe five to 10 degrees hotter than the peroxide at the top, when I pull that head out and I dispose of my peroxide, there won't be a tooth left. There will be a small amount of white powder in the bottom of the pot because it will completely dissolve that tooth. So just a slight five to 10 degree difference, mixing the chemicals can make a huge difference to whether or not you end up with a pile of white sludge or a beautiful pristine gear line. So now that since we're on peroxide, what, cause a lot of guys are gonna use it. I mean, that's how you did finished product of, of this one. So uh, if, if a guy's gonna do that, say any, any method, but they wanna peroxide it at the end, um, what, you're not just using you probably can use like your 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 drugstore peroxide, but what peroxide are you using for this process? So the peroxide that I use is actually one step below the strength of peroxide that I would need a chemist license in order to be able to buy. Like it's it's pretty caustic stuff. If you get it on your skin, you're gonna get a pretty severe chemical burn. I believe it's 37% pure, something, something in that line. So it's not really something that the average person is gonna go out and buy. And if they do, they need to be really careful because you can end up seriously hurting yourself. 
but I mean, as far as whitening a deer head, I mix three gallons of peroxide with two and a half cups of Dawn dish soap. I have a electric burner that I set to 100 degrees. The head goes in there for 12 hours and it comes out pristine just like this. So that's after, but so we're kind of getting ahead of, <laughs> ahead of things here. Um, so the peroxide, you're, you can get that at a, like a beauty supply store? Is it like the hair, I, the hair peroxide that they're using? No, they're using? It's, it's about 10 to 12 times stronger than what you're gonna get at a beauty supply. I actually have to go through a licensed dealer in order to get my peroxide because you almost need a license in order to buy it. Gotcha. So it, again, it's not something that the average Joe's gonna go out and buy because I buy it in 15 gallon barrels and it costs me close to $500 a barrel. So, so, but if you're not, if you're just an average guy, you know, you're just you can, a nice white deer head, what, where you can, you, go? I, you can use your standard drugstore peroxide. It's gonna take a little longer. You put it in a pot, little dish soap, low heat, let it go for maybe 12, 14 hours, pull it out, check it. If it's not as white as you want, let it go a little longer if it if you're good with it make sure you rinse it off thoroughly and again set it out in the sun let it dry that's going to harden the bone up and it will actually deactivate the peroxide so that it doesn't continue to eat at the skull after you've taken it out um i've seen people use the hair dot the bleaching hair dyes the powders the, like the liquids or the 40 volume yep. peroxide. but with that again it's a caustic chemical if you're not careful and you leave it on your head too long, you might end up without a head. Yeah, so bottom line with that, guys, be careful with the peroxide. Use it sparingly. It, it'll work. It, if you can use it, a little dab will do you until you get the desired finish that you want. Yeah, make sure um, you're checking it consistently. Yeah, don't just sit it in there and forget about it and go do something else. Don't don't put a rack of ribs in the smoker while you're doing this. <laughs> or, or do put a rack of ribs in the smoker while you're doing this, but check this more than the ribs. <laughs> Um, so, but for a guy using regular peroxide, store bought, like drugstore stuff, do you mix that half and half with water? Like how you... With that, because it's such a low grade peroxide, I would honestly, I would probably go like two thirds peroxide, one third water, because if you dilute it too much, it's going to take days in order to finish. And at that point, the liquid is going to make the bone so soft that you're going to have to let it sit for days before you can handle it otherwise it could damage your head okay. so it sounds like if you wanted this finished product without doing the bugs which we're getting to you'd probably go to the beauty supply that honestly that would be the way i would go okay. go with the powdered hair bleach that way you can put it on you can keep an eye on it maybe scrape a little off, check how white it is, and then you can thoroughly rinse it and not have to worry about it still being on there and eating at the bone of the skull. Gotcha. Lots of good info there. So before he peroxided this head, um, was this a customer's head or is this one of your deer? This is mine. This is one of the deer that he shot. So um, take him through the process of how you got this head to be in this state where it's at. So what I do, I own a European mount business. I use divested beetles to clean the flesh off the skulls. What I have to do is completely flesh the skull and then I put it in with the beetles and I mean, beetles aren't like an employee. I can't, I can't tell my beetles like I can tell big buck shuck, you know, we need to, we need to get this product done it's pretty much at the discretion of the beetles if they're hungry they can clean a head in four to six days if they're not hungry it could take three to four weeks once the beetles have the head completely defleshed I take it out and again the peroxide I use it doesn't care if it whitens the skull or if it whitens the horns you can actually see right here on this mount I didn't quite get the horn completely covered and it slightly bleached the horn. What I do, silicone from Ace Hardware. And I just use clear silicone. I get it as well as I can onto the antlers about a third of the way up. 
and then I put it into a peroxide water non dish soap solution. I let it go for 12 hours. I check it. If it needs to go a little more, I'll reset my hot pad, let it go a little more. If it's done at 12 hours, I take it out. I have to thoroughly rinse it to get all the peroxide off. Once it's been thoroughly rinsed and dried for 48 hours, I remove the silicone from the antlers and I have an acrylic acetone mixture that I dip the heads in and it makes a really nice clear coat finish. I mean, I can rub dirt on this and it will wipe off with a dishcloth where with these three unsealed heads, if you wipe dirt on it, if you have small kids and they like to grab stuff with chocolatey fingers, you have chocolate fingerprints on your deer heads. Gotcha. So that's that's probably the best way to go to get the best finished product. Uh, European mount um, is going the bugs route. And what were they called? Domestic beetles. They're actually a native. They're actually a native beetle to Michigan. You, if you're walking down the road and you see roadkill, you flip it over. There's domestic beetles there. Domestic beetles. Okay. What? So what would a, a head cost to do? Really, it depends on where you go. I, I do mine fifty-five dollars. If you want the lower jaw kept on, sixty-five. But I've seen other businesses that charge all the way up to one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, it's probably like a full-blown taxidermist, I would imagine. Yeah. You know? So, so that, there you have it. You know, you can go from hanging it out in the tree and getting the, the you know, that finished product, and that's going to take a lot longer, obviously, for nature to take its course, kind of thing. Um, bury it, submerge it in water, boil it, and the domestic beetles. So, if you got the money, that's obviously the, the best way to go. Um, if you, you want to do it yourself back to the pot ordeal <laughs> like I said if you if you value your marriage do this outside um, I did this inside there was a pot the uh, pasta pot and it stunk it stunk pretty good and obviously you got all the crap in your house um, so now when I do one it's I've got a, a big turkey roaster with a propane burner on the bottom that the whole big stand um, you can do it outside and uh, that works much better you keep the mess out mom was so, a lot happier mom is way happier and so yeah that's that's the most important thing but uh yeah so if you guys like this video you know help, hope it helped you guys decide you know on, on how what ways that there are to do it and I'm, I'm sure there's more but oh yeah for for the average guy that doesn't want a lot to mess around with um hang it in the tree you've got a shovel dig a hole bury it um, submerge it in water in a bucket, change it out every two or three days, boil it, bugs. So, with that, anything else you want to add to that? So, little trick of the trade that I learned when I first started doing deer heads, even with the beetles, the nose cap on the head will fall off sometimes. So, if you're doing it yourself and you're having issues with the nose caps coming off, if you run a little bit of super glue along this seam right here just a small amount nothing that you can visually see once it dries it will hold that nose cap on and you won't have the issues with it falling off nice. yeah it would have been nice to keep this guy looking like these two still but got what we got so yeah so if you guys got value out of all this go check out our other videos on big buck shock check out the facebook group hit like subscribe share with your friends leave us a comment on which one you think that you're most likely to do and uh, we'll see you guys all in the next video